My name is Clarissa Augustinus, and I'm the unit leader of the Land and Global Land Tool Network in Human Habitat. And I'm going to be talking to you about addressing global land challenges. Of course, you know that land is both technically and politically very complex and needs a multidisciplinary analytical approach. And remember one example where I was working and we were trying to fix both the legal system, create financial models, and try and recalibrate the public and private sector burdens and benefits in regard to the program, all simultaneously. It's very typical for most land projects. I'm going to zoom down now and, and talk about Angel's thesis of that cities are going to expand by 175% between now and 2030. So what does that really mean in terms of delivery? It's going to require systems and institutional strengthening for spatial planning, planning implementation, adjusting land documents and human settlements and their tenure relationships. It's going to require massive infrastructure and service delivery and city-wide slum upgrade. So if I'm going to zoom now onto the land specifically, I've given you the bigger picture, but now we're just going to talk about the land challenges. So currently in developing countries, most of the land coverage is around 30%. This in essence means that 70% of the country is not covered by land documents. And in those areas, we have social tenures like customary tenure, informal settlements, overlapping rights and so on. And in re reality, to move from the 30% the to a situation where the majority of people have some form of land documents would probably take about 600 years. If we look specifically at the challenge of the land administration systems, which underpin any land rights, what we see is that many land administration systems are paper. They're not actually digital. And this makes it very difficult to search for information about a specific person if you want to sell the land, but also to aggregate the information for city management. Many land administration systems paper are not actually in order. And you can see from these pictures that uh, you would be really struggling to be able to find information, number one, and number two, impossible to aggregate. What I'm saying to you is that land documents underpin many of the instruments that cities use for management, such as planning and the implementation of plans, for the delivery of services and infrastructure, and also revenue collection is often linked to the land documents that are in place. So municipalities are the financial basis of municipalities is very importantly linked to these land documents. What do we have if we lack documents? We have slum upgrading, uh, which is done piecemeal and not city citywide. Slum proliferation, plans are not implemented. We have the key issue, which is the insufficient supply of service land. And of course, the demand for land is much greater than the supply, linking directly to corruption. And then we can't scale, we end up project-based. Uh, if you look at this map, what you'll see is that uh, most developing countries have a, at least a third of their cities are informal. And in Africa, we are talking about 60%. And, and what I'm doing is I'm tracing this directly to the lack of appropriate land documents. Now, what are our solutions? Uh, we have a global land tool network uh, here, which is facilitated by UN Habitat. And it has over 60 partners who do collaborative research on developing new tools at scale. And I'm going to give you just a little taste of a few of these. Firstly, we are talking about freehold title cannot be scaled in 600 years, so we need to introduce new forms of tenure, not just individual ownership. And these new forms of tenure should be along a continuum of land rights. Secondly, we need affordable land tools which means an affordable pro-poor land information system. And here I'm talking about the social tenure domain model. And then we also, more importantly, need new forms of land readjustment, 
which are both participatory and include appropriate financial models, and citywide slum upgrading, which requires the fixing of the systems. If you look at the continuum of land rights, what you'll see is that over time, people can incrementally improve their land rights. With freehold being one alternative, we know that 25 countries are already on this path. And the best example of this is the Namibia Flexible Land Act, which where in some areas are upgraded over time, and the land system and the information management systems facilitate this. We also know that the African Union and the Economic uh, and the European Commission support this approach, and we have seen a global paradigm shift. Where so all over the world, people are now talking about the continuum of land rights as the only way in which we are going to address our issues. If I come to now the social tenure domain model, and I have to confess that this name is still in the hands of the technicians, this is a pro-poor land information system which records all forms of land rights and claims, is based on an open and free software package, on global standards, it's an ISO standard, and it can complement the existing expensive systems that the governments and municipalities are using. It's easy to use, you don't need a university qualification, you can have a basic um, secondary, secondary school qualification, we've trained slum dwellers in this, and it's currently being implemented in five countries. This model is absolutely key for the management of the informal aspects of cities, including informal settlements and informal high-rise buildings, because it allows us to manage the information about who's in the area in a way that you can understand multiple rights, multiple people's social tenures, and that they have different relationships to the land. The next tool we're going to look at is participatory inclusive land readjustment. This is a very important tool for us to be able to do city extensions at scale and, of course, densification. We all know how difficult it is to, to do this, and we are rethinking what is required to make this tool viable. At the strategic level, it's important for the improvement of urban governance, as well as re-engineering the shape of cities and recalibrating the relationship between the public and the private sector so that the private sector takes more of the burdens and the public sector captures more of the benefits. Of course, at the basic level, what we're talking about here is improved supply of service to urban land through a negotiated process. We are also looking at uh, slum upgrading, citywide slum upgrading with land readjustment elements in order to fix the systems so that we can do citywide slum upgrading. All these tools that I'm talking about require action research at a very large scale. For instance, we are currently doing a pilot in Colombia the city in Colombia called Medellin, where uh, the municipality is involved, the national government, um, UN Habitat, the planners, the land people, the legal people, NGOs, uh, and the technical people who know how to uh, create these tools. And while we are on the one hand, doing a pilot. On the other hand, we're developing the methodology for other countries and also low-income countries. So in conclusion, there are viable technical solutions under development. Uh, of course, these can't be implemented unless we do an, a political economy analysis for implementation, and it requires political buy-in. What you really need to understand is that to develop these tools requires action research at a very large scale, which involves governments, local governments, professional bodies, training and research institutions, civil society, all developing these national and municipal scale tools. And this is what GLTN does. It creates the collaborative learning paths. An example of this in Uganda is where 
GLTM worked with a local NGO as well as an umbrella civil society organization to pilot the uh, pro poor land information systems. Once the community felt it was useful, it was then uh, upscaled into the municipality and then from the municipality to national government. And now national government wants to scale it to 40 municipalities. So it's not only uh, these processes that are uh, involved, but also you have technical and legal people behind the thinking in order to make the tool robust. So what we're saying here is solutions for the extension of cities. They are in, in process, but they are enormously complex to develop, expensive, but that's the route we have to go in our learning. We can't just do it in the laboratory. Thank you.